Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlilhu fala hadiya ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم 
wa nahnu ala dhalika min ash-shahidin amma ba'd Alhamdulillah all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for once more blessing us to be here today to perform the Salatul Jum'ah and to listen to the khutbah and Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us and chosen us to be among the ummah among the followers of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in I also pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his guidance upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his forgiveness and acceptance upon us. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to be able to deliver this khutbah inshallah. Certainly we are human beings, we are wise, we are weak, we know nothing, we cannot do or say anything without the guidance, the knowledge, the wisdom and the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge and the ability to be able to fulfill this responsibility inshallah i put my tawakkal i put my trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient alhamdulillah last week for those of us who were here and because most of the time we do a continuation of the previous khutbah Last week, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi'ithnallah, we spoke on what is the purpose of life in this world. What is the purpose of life in this world? A very interesting, interesting issue. Something that we looked at from a different perspective, not just from the perspective of a non-Muslim or from a disbeliever in the world, but from a Muslim perspective. The reality of Muslims being Muslims, but yet living their life for the world, which is totally contrary to the purpose of life as a believer and a Muslim. See, sometimes we pray and we perform Hajj and we give zakah and we fast, etc. But then, unfortunately, our agenda, our objective in life is all about success of the dunya. We pray and we do these things because we are here and it is something to be done. But it's not necessarily that we're living our life only for Allah and the hereafter. Because it works in proportion to our amount more time into it. If our time, our agenda, when we get up in the morning, before we sleep, is all about business, the dunya, the success in this world, then that's what we're living for. And if before while we sleep, our regrets is what have we not done for Allah today? What were we supposed to do for today before we fall asleep in the night? Before sleeping, if we ponder over what we didn't do as Muslims, what we should have done for Islam as Muslims, what we should have done as Muslims in this world, and we regret that and make the intention to do better tomorrow for Allah, for Islam, for the deen and for ourselves, in the grave and the hereafter, then we're living for Allah and the deen and the hereafter. But if before we sleep, we wonder how much we have lost today in business, how much we didn't make, and what we're going to do tomorrow, and how much more we're going to make tomorrow, then we've got to try to study our objective of life. What are we living for and why are we living? The last thing before we go to sleep, it's about how much we did not accomplish in the dunya, not realizing that sleep is the sister of death and if we close our eyes and when we close our eyes we don't know if we'll rise the next morning and the last thing we will die with in our hearts and in our thoughts will be all about our success of the world and not our journey and our real journey of life to the hereafter then we gotta ponder what is our purpose 
What is the purpose and what we live in for? You see, brothers and sisters, a lot of people go to church. A lot of people go to the mandir. A lot of people go to the synagogues. A lot of people do a lot of things. But in doing all those things, they also live for the world. And we have to be careful we don't only come for Juma and go to Hajj and pray in Ramadan, but our purpose is living for the world. The world has got to be a necessity, not an objective of life. And last week we spoke more or less on that, the purpose of life in this world. Today in the second khutbah, bi Allah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to continue on that topic more or less in the line of what does the Quran and what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about this world? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You see, last week we spoke about the purpose in this world. Now that's interesting because if we don't understand what this world is and what Allah says about this world, what the Prophet says about this world, then we may not understand why we live in this world and what we are living for in this world and why we are living in this world. A lot of us don't understand what this world is. So in the second khutbah, bi Allah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll continue on that aspect of what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about this dunya, about this world, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us in Jannah without reckoning, inshallah. Wa akhira da'wan alhamdulillah, ya rabbil alameen. ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Once more we thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for blessing us to be here today to be able to perform the Salat al Jumaa and to listen to the Khutbah. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal on Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to be able to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Last week, Allah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we spoke on a verse of Surah Kaf, chapter 18, verse 7. I want to repeat this verse today, inshallah, remind myself and you again as we continue on this topic of what is the dunya. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna ja'alna ma ala al ardi zinatallaha. Ma ala al ardi zinatallaha. Linabluwahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala. Subhanallah. Allah says, Inna ja'alna ma ala al ard. We have indeed created on the earth, meaning in this universe, in this dunya, zinatallaha. We have beautified it, we have created ornaments in it. Linabluwahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala. So that He would try us, so that He would test us. To see who is best among us in good amal and deeds. This is this needs no explanation. 
And that's the reason why in a very, very, very well-known hadith, the Prophet says, the synopsis of the hadith is, that every ummah, every nation, before the Prophet came into this world, every people had a trial and test in their life. And he says, the fitna of my ummah, the fitna, the trial of his ummah, of us, the followers of the Prophet wasalam, will be al-mal. When he says al-mal, meaning wealth, he didn't just mean money, 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 money. Because money is a good thing. We use money for everything, more or less. We just don't need it in the grave. We need it before we go in the grave. And we also don't need it after we die. Other people got to find it to bury us. So it's not even necessary to bury us. And if we don't have it, the government will bury us. Because they're not going to leave us to rot and stink around town. See how useful we are useful and how wasteful we could be. We think we're useful, but we could also be a bunch of rotten dead meat that is not useful to the world. Okay. So the Prophet وسلم, when he says wealth, he didn't just mean money because you pay zakat for money, you need money to go to Hajj, we need money to give sadqah, we need money, zakat will fit. Money is a good thing. It's a necessity, zururiya, something necessary in life. But he meant the love, the attachment that his ummah will have for the world and for the love, for the materialistic, unnecessary things. Not the necessary things. Not necessarily, not the money, not the house, not the car, not the wife, not the children, not the business. He means the unnecessary things that we spend our money in extravagance, our time, our effort, wasting in things that are not necessary for the success of life in this world and the success of life in the hereafter and what will benefit us in the grave. That's what is the life of this world. Wife and children, and homes, etc. All ibadah. We mentioned that last week, the Ibn Allah. But he means when we get into extravagance and our intention and our attention and our life is all about the dunya and the accomplishment of this dunya. That's when we become worldly. And understanding that the success in this dunya is the success that we live for. No. And that's what he said that Allah, that will be the fitna of this ummah. So the Ummah will pray, they will perform Hajj, they will give the, the card, they will fast. But they will all have a different, most of them in fact, sorry, will have a different agenda and objective. Remember some months ago, I, I, I gave a khutbah bi idhnillah, saying that this fitna has even affected the masjids and the Islamic centers and the Islamic world. Where people started putting israf into masajid. Spending millions on necessary decorations and chandelier and beautiful this and beautiful that that are not really necessary, only for competition as to which party in uh, which party in power in the masjid can spend more and do more in the physical settings as opposed to the spiritual upliftment of the ummah. And the Prophet ﷺ has even condemned that kind of israf in our personal homes, fallas in the home of Allah. If it's necessary, it's the Kaaba, it's the Haram Sharif, it's some big place, you need to expand. But don't put it into unnecessary things that is just a matter of competition of what the executive of the board does. It has even hit into the Islamic territory, the fitna and the competition of the dunya. It's not about Iman and Ibadah anymore. That's why the Quran tells us about the people who run the affairs of Allah, who run the masajid, should be people with Iman. Not just people with money. I mean, you need the people with money, eh? Don't misunderstand. <laughs> Very important. So Allah says, <laughs> That these Ornaments and attractions in the world are only to test our iman to see if we will understand it to be necessities or we'll make it an object. 
But then Allah beautifully comes back and says, وَإِنَّا لَجَعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا وَإِنَّا لَجَعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا سَعِيدًا جُرُزًا You know, while we live in this dunya and we run behind every unnecessary thing, Allah reminds us, Verily, whatever, all these beautiful ornaments and decorations on earth, we shall one day destroy, it will vanish, it will become dust and dry soil and nothing. See? Remember last week, brothers and sisters, I used an example, Bi'idhnillah, about a child. If you give a baby a million dollar check and you give the baby a toy, the baby will leave the million dollar check and play with the toy. Now we may say he doesn't understand money, so that's why he will play with a toy and not the check. Yeah, he doesn't understand money, that's why he plays with the toy. A teenager, you tell the teenager of all about the things in the dunya and the world, of his accomplishment, he says, no, I prefer my friends and my games, because he doesn't have experience. Okay, but what about the old man who is about to die and is in the hospital or is at home? You think he doesn't have no sense? He lived the life in the world. Huh? He's not like the child and the teenager. He lived the life in the world. He knows what is life. He has lived life. But he regrets that he wasted his entire life only in unnecessary things in the world. He did not eat healthy. He did not spend in a constructive way for Allah. Now he's sick and all and he needs Allah. He needs Ibadah. He doesn't have health to even pray properly. He doesn't have the wealth to even spend in the part of Allah because his family took all. Or he invested it in wrong areas and he lost it by now. So his whole life was spent in a waste of time. Now in the hospital and on his dying bed, he regrets he wasted his life. And now he's only thinking about amal, good deeds, and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's only, oh Allah, what? if he could read Quran and make zikr, Allah, he'll do that. But when he had the health and the wealth, he didn't do it. Because he's experienced and he has lived it and he understands that he wasted his time. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us what we did with our time and our wealth and our youth and our strength in this world, and we realize we have wasted it, we will ask Allah, Ya yeah, Allah, Give us a chance to go back to Florida so we could do some da'wah instead. So we could pray more salah instead. So we could spread the message of Islam more. We could do more dhikr and ibadah than wasting time running down only properties. Allah will say, too late. I sent thousands of prophets to warn you. You didn't pay heed. It's too late. No going back. Aha. Uh -huh. We wasted our time in the world. As I said again, not wife, children, homes, motor car, it's not a waste of time. It's necessity to live in the line of Ibadah. But in the unnecessary things, and we all are smart enough to know what is unnecessary. For intelligent people, signs are enough. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, once he was walking with one of his companions, an assistant, and when he reached the, gra the graveyard, and he told them, Assalamu alaikum ya ahl al kubur and he greeted all the people, the inhabitants of the graves, the dwellers of the cemetery. He said, how is life down there? Okay. Well-known incident. How is life down there? And he said, well, I'll tell you about life up here. Your wives remarried, your property is distributed, your children have become orphans, and that's how life is up here. And he says, if only those people in the graves could have spoken, they would have said, we have regretted our life on earth. The time we wasted only in unnecessary things, we, wish we should have spent it in good amal. Because Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala who then said, the grave is a container of amal. The grave is a container of good deeds. Hence the, the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu says, when a man dies and he goes to the cemetery and his body is taken to the cemetery, three things follow him. His family, 
his wealth, and what? His amal, his deeds. And the Prophet sallallahu says, and after he is buried, friends, wife, family, children, crocodile tears, alligator tears, I don't care who tears, whatever tears. Some people pay people to cry and shed tears. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, in India they got some people that pay them to cry. You know? So everybody will think the man who died is a good man. Everybody crying in the village, not knowing they were paid. After they leave that home, they go and say how much money they got for crying. So people will think he was a good man. Anyhow, today nowadays you don't even see the sons crying around the grave. They're happy that the father's gone. Now they can share the property freely and take charge. They can't wait for the man to be buried. Uh huh. So, once upon a time it was they go to the cemetery and they cry and they miss their dad or their mother. Today, as the Prophet says, everybody come back. They come back with this car and all whatever they spend and his wealth and everything remains. It is only his amal, the good things he did in this world. That's why I said about the old man and woman who are about to die. That's all they think about. They're just so close to death and near death situation that sometimes they forget about what they have in the world and they're only thinking about the grave, one foot in the grave, what next? Well, some of them all and they still don't even think. They got two feet in the grave and they still can't even think that they're about to die. They still hold on to the dunya as though Allah Akbar. They can't part from the dunya. But that's the understanding when the person goes in the grave that it's only the amal and the good deeds that he or she would have done in this world. Brothers and sisters, Listen to this verse, very interesting verse, to the point, to the point, to the point of life today. Chapter 57, verse 20. Hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the life. We just spoke a little bit about the, 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 the beautiful things in the world that Allah has placed as a test and trial. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. A'lamu annama al-hayatu dunya Allah says, know. He wants us to know. Learn, understand, be aware. A'lamu annama al-hayatu dunya La'ibu wa lahu wa zina Subhanallah. He says the life in this world in this dunya, hayat dunya, la'ibu wa lahwa, wa zina, is all about sports, amusement, fun, and ornaments and distraction. What the fakhur, interesting, an interesting word Allah used. Bainakum. What a kafur! Some of the powerful words Allah used. Fil awal wal awlad. Fakhr. What a fakhr. You know what's fakhr? What's fakhr? Urdu may be fakhr kaiti, you know? It's ki andar me bol fakhr hai. Be careful, you don't mix it close to some English words. It could be very obscene. Arrogance. Boastfulness that the people in the world would live a life of only showing off of what we have, what we have accomplished in wealth. What he says, fill and wall, wall aulad. I'm not telling you that. Go check chapter 57, verse 20. You listen to some wealthy people talk, all they boast about their wealth accomplishment. And what their children has accomplished in the dunya. Not how many salah the children pray, and how many masajid they have built, and how much sadqajariya they have invested in, and how much they have invested in their children for ibadah. And hear what Allah is saying. Fil awal, wal awlad, fakhr, wa takathur. They pump, they show, they boasting, their multiplication, their investment, their income in the investment of wealth, property, show, think, 
Go sit and listen to some of these people, what they talk about. Not about their akhirah, not about their grave. It's all, sit and listen to them. Bunch of idiots, what they talk about. Foot in the grave, but they still only speak about the dunya. That's why the Prophet says, people like this are biwakuf, they are fools. That is his hadith. Because they live only for the boast, the pump, and the show of the dunya. And the intelligent people, their success and their achievement is the akhirah. No, again, remember I said in the beginning, nothing is wrong with having homes and cars and wives and children. That is ibadah and nisus and important. Part of the infrastructure of life in Islam. Think about life, brothers and sisters. Anyway, before we get to think about life, hear what Allah says. Wamal hayatu dunya. Wamal hayatu dunya. Illa mata'ul gurur. At the end of this verse, Allah says, Know that this life, this world, is only a world of deception. Remember, we see everything and we think it's forever. It's like a balloon going up in the air. This world, deception. You try to grab the balloon, you jump on a ladder, and it's going higher and higher and higher. You fall and die in the balloon, you never get it. That is what happens with this world. That's the Mufassirin interpretation of the dunya. It's a deception that people chase behind, never get it, die and go. Others come, run behind it, die and go, and nobody will ever get it. Until Allah destroys it, as he says in the previous verse in Surah Kafka. Haven't we seen that? Do we need to die and live again to see that? Now, as I said, nothing is wrong with the necessity of life. Even the necessity of, necessity of life we have confused. Take marriage. What's the purpose of marriage? Marriage is lillah. Marriage is for Allah. When a person intends to get married, he should or she should get married for Allah. Not for what the heart wants alone. Nobody say don't marry someone you don't love because eh? you're going to have a terrible time. You might be living in hell down here and you go up there and you still live in hell up there. You are too hell to live in. Yeah. Marriage partner, you see, it's a bounty of Allah that is available there. Your spouse is like a fruit that exists in the world. You seek it, you find it, you like it. I wouldn't tell her to eat it. <laughs> you enjoy it. Because it's a fruit and a bounty, Allah says, that in Surah Rum, chapter 30, verse 21, that He has created a partner as Sakina, tranquility, peace. He has placed love and peace, and it may not a call, peace in the heart in the partners. So it's, it's a blessing. Today, do we marry because it's for Allah? Or marriage has become generally, I don't mean everybody, in the world. Look at the world. Look at what happens. The world lets two biological people come in together only for their love and more than their love. It's about the investment. Two biological human beings come in to invest in houses, in motor cars, and in properties, and in a big banking account. It's, that's where they put their, 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 their purpose of marriage, not for Allah. Because if it's for Allah, they will try to find a partner for Allah. They will try to groom their heart for Allah. And they will try to groom the person they love for Allah. Other than that, they try to groom Allah to suit themselves. Number two. It's two biological people coming together to, to build properties or to build homes and, and, and whatever, build a, a, a dunya, and to invest in properties. As opposed to yesteryears. Think what is happening in the dunya today. Compare, don't follow America. Even America was not like this before. Today it's about people coming only for properties and, and, and the dunya, the marriage. Marriage is for multiplication, to please Allah and to expand and produce more in the ummah. Today people get married and the first intention is not to have children. And the purpose of marriage is to have children. That's why the Prophet says, when you seek a wife, try to find a wife who can make you plenty children. Today, nowadays, you find a wife who could make children and you tell her don't make no children. Because we worry about the investment of the dunya. If we make children, 
where we will we will, our money will go into the children and not in the investment of the dunya so we invest in the materialistic things as opposed to investing in the children and that's the islamic concept marry for allah and invest in the children there's a difference in investing in children and investing for children eh? somebody get today we invest for children we don't invest in children so when you invest for children it means property and wealth and dunya and when you invest in children it means a deen the life of the akhira allah and his rasul so when we die this investment that we made would become sort of a for us and their prayer and their dua and their amal and their quran and their deen and all the good things that we have invested in will be a blessing for us in the akhira investment for them is investment for us but if we invest materialistic things only for them we will die and they may not be of good for themselves nor for us you probably have to call another foreign imam to make do you know why so many people when they die you have to call a foreign imam and a foreigner and somebody else to pray for the father and the mother somebody else to bury them somebody else to read quran somebody else to make dua and their own children cannot do it because the parents invested in the dunya they did not even invest in their children to pray for them that we talk about we live in islam in the dunya what do we talk about what we really live in First Hakikat, you're probably thinking, you know what you guys were thinking? But this guy gonna be a madman, you know. I know a lot of people think I'm a madman. Well listen. If you think I'm a madman, you shouldn't be here. Because you're listening to a madman. And if you don't think I'm a madman, then all of us are mad. Because those people will think that we are mad people. But you should be glad that they think we are mad. Because the Prophet says when people get so engrossed in the love for Allah and the dhikr of Allah and the ibadah of Allah and the lift for the akhirah, people will think they are mad. I have a lot of people tell me I'm mad, a lot of friends and family, but at the end of the day, they're not my friends and family because they think I'm mad and I don't need them. And I don't think they need a mad friend. Bottom line. When we talk of the, because people will say, well, what he's talking is not hakikat. It's not reality. Reality is living for the dunya, man. But when we die, when we're in the hospital, when we're facing the real consequences of life, then we recollect on what is the reality. Very important, brothers and sisters. So I was telling you a little while ago, today even the objective of marriage and the building of a family has gone in the wrong way with the wrong intention. We've got to try to understand how important it is to put this reality of the life. This life that we live is a temporary life. That's why Allah says, Subhanallah. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ It's a deceitful life. We gotta live what Allah says to live. Not the things that follow our hearts and what we think is life. This life, whether it's 50, 60, 70, 80 or 90 years, it's just a little, little, little minute percentage of the real life. From where we came, remember last week or week before we were talking about where we came, where we are, where we head into. The real life, this is only a little percentage of that soul, where we were and where we came from, in the womb of the mother. This temporary journey here into the grave, how long we don't know how many thousands of years we may remain in the grave. Another stage of this soul and this ruh and this zindagi and this life and then Khalidina fiha but I live been forever in the Akhira this life this few years and nothing if you compare the real journey of life as we started last week and we talked today this life is like a man living his 83 years or the day his whole day and he goes a little bit in the toilet for a few minutes I don't think anybody is that foolish to believe that when they go to the toilet and they are in the toilet and the comfort of the toilet, they believe this is what I live in for, to be in the toilet. But some people probably live only to be in the toilet. Because at the end of the day, life is all about eating, drinking and going to the toilet. Eating, drinking, invest here and then put it out there. Invest here and download it there. Some people live only for that. It's just a temporary time. The whole world becomes like that. Although it looks like 75, 80, 90 years. 
Because the reality is the journey that continues. And that's why Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala who in hadith reminds us of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi who said that the grave is the first stop, the first stop on the journey of the hereafter. And if our success in the grave is okay, then the journey will become easy after that. Living the right life with a proper understanding, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, in this line where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about A'lamu annama al-hayatu dunya la'ibu wa lahwa wa zina subhanallah wa tafakhur Allahu Akbar wa tafakhur It has become disgusting in the world Wa tafakhur baynakum wa takathur fil amwal wal awlad Where people all, and I told you this is the point and I'm not speaking of disbelievers and non-Muslims. It's a problem in the Ummah because the Prophet says that his Ummah, fitna and trial will be their love, their boast, their pomp, their intention, their living only for the deception in this world. And that's why today it is such a haram thing to hear people only boasting of their wealth and boasting of their worldly accomplishment the children have and how many properties they have given them and how many this they have given them it's all a false life now if they could tell you how much salah their children pray and how much investment they did in their children's akhira and how much investment they have done in masajid and islamic schools and for ibadah mashallah Allah has given them more like Prophet Sulaiman like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu like Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu like Dawood, Hazrat Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam they spend and they praise Allah and they spend for Allah and yet they have also in the dunya mashallah but if they don't have about this the grave and the akhirah then this is pomp and show you look around the world that's all you go in the Muslim world in Muslim countries here, there and everywhere it's a fitna of the time. And everybody is following that time. Everybody is getting into that dream. We all, I mean, as I said, it's necessity. Being a doctor, being a lawyer, being an accountant, this is all education. It's very good, it's very important. But the intention must be right. It shouldn't be only for money. If we have doctors and lawyers and accountants here, forgive me. But your intention got to be to be a doctor to help the people to help them to have better health, to be healthier. The purpose should not only be to make money. Today the hospital is doing bad. Am I right to say that Jackson, remember, Jackson Hospital lost a lot of workers? What was the purpose? To make money or to help people? I don't know. It has all become a money scheme. It's not about getting you healthier, no? it's how much more money they could make. Long ago, less hospitals, less doctors, more healthy people. Today, more doctors, more hospitals, more unhealthy people. Because everybody wants to a, be a surgeon and want to cut you and want to give you the wrong medicine so they can make more money, unless you sue them. The intention is wrong. The missions of the hospitals are wrong. It's all about business investment. Go, before we ask Obama, he will tell you. I'm not so well versed in that field. That's why he has to start cutting down all these bunch of crooks. Go read it and see it. Don't think I'm just mad and I'm telling you that. Lawyers, it's all about defending the criminal. You break the, t the traffic light? Okay, boy, go break more traffic light. Just pay me the money and I'll get you off the ticket. It's all about breaking the laws of the government. All about making the children and the people more crooked. You kill a man, come pay me more money. Your father got more money, you pay me the money. Or you have more money, I will defend the criminal. In this world, you think he will be defended in the hereafter? What's going to happen to Allah's attorney and prosecutor on the day of judgment? So it's all about a bunch of crooks here and there. But if the intention is to help the innocent people, if the lawyer is to help the innocent people, if the lawyer is to save the innocent man from jail, if the lawyer is to save the innocent people who are, who are being persecuted and oppressed by the, by, the, by, by the tyrant people around, mashallah, it's good. But if the lawyer intends to make money in defending crooks and criminals, then where is that in Islam? But we live this world because our parents tell us become that crook in the world. Not the Akhirah. Some of the accountants, they should be making money to help the government. They all teach you how to thief money from the government. How to give the government less money. And you know what's the interesting thing? They make you the client pay for it. And the clients are so foolish. 
They teach you how to take money from the government, say that's being smart. Let the country go bankrupt, go into a recession, and then we'll all cry the country is bad when it is they who rob the government the taxes. Because they qualified in how to do that. That is Islam. Teeth in the government. Ah. Bro, I always tell you, I met a legal investigator right here in Florida. And it was a Muslim who happened to have been in that position. And the person says some of the biggest crooks in stealing this government and not paying the taxes is some of the biggest Muslims in South Florida. I said, Subhanallah, don't let me hear it. This wasn't a non-Muslim telling me that. It was a Muslim who I brought here and made a survey of how much money they have and they don't let the government know. And say, so we're honest in the eyes of Allah. We don't rob nobody. Our neighbor is safe from us Muslims. We're just a bunch of crooks. We steal the money from the government and suffer the rest of the people. Is that Islam? Because our agenda is only the dunya. Do you think we could do that with zakat? And then some of us also do it with zakat. The whole purpose is all about the dunya, not the zakat. Not the purification of our wealth. The purpose of zakat, zakat means purification. It's to purify our wealth. It's to check it properly, balance it properly, and give it in charity. We find mechanisms and ways, and we find the right muftis and scholars who could tell us we don't have to pay so much at that. And if you get a mufti who tell you, well, you have to pay 10,000, I say, he doesn't know what he's saying. But mufti says, how much? He said, 2,000. I say, mufti, you take $1,000 for that. That's good fatwa. And we go that way because the money pleases us. It's all about rubbing the, the situation. Then we live for Allah. What's going to happen to that zakat? The Prophet ﷺ says, the zakat that we did not pay will turn into a serpent. It will wrap around our necks. And on the day of judgment, the, Satan will, the serpent will push its venom in our mouth and say, I am your zakat. What happened to that hadith? And we comfortable rubbing the, the situation? Because of our agenda, and we say we pray Salah, we come for Juma, we go for Hajj, we fast in Ramadan. Uh -huh. But we, our ikhlas and our sincere intention and our amal is all about only obtaining the dunya. We pray here, but it's all the dunya here. And Allah looks at our hearts. Allah looks at our hearts, brothers and sisters. It's a very sad time we live into. A very sad situation we live into. And we have to be very careful. And as I conclude this khutbah, I want to remind myself and you again of this part in which Allah says, That the people will only boast of their worldly achievement and the worldly achievement of their children. They wouldn't make children for Allah, they'll make children for the dunya to think they have wealth and property and a bunch of very different category of people. So you see what has happened? And then the children grow up with that pride because the parents put it in their hearts. I want to be a doctor to make plenty of money and ruin a lot of people and steal from them. Don't give them the right medicine because they won't come back. Don't find a solution to crime because you wouldn't be a good lawyer. That will be the end of your cases. Don't charge. Don't let the man pay the right taxes to the government because he will not come back to you. And you will lose clients. It's all about that. See the life we live in? Because we groom the children wrong. We bring them up only for the dunya. Nobody says don't be accountants and lawyers and doctors. We need that. Muslims should be doctors and lawyers and accountants and businessmen. But honest doctors and lawyers and businessmen and professionals. And we also now on the other hand, we pay all the money to support the crookery that is going on. Now look at the difference of the Islamic profession. I won't tell you to do those criminal things. I'll tell you spend money in charity, zakat, print Quran, help do dawah. Look, we start the Al-Hikmah Dawah TV program. You know, Alhamdulillah, I have ladies, sick people, old women, women who can't pray, children calling and saying, we're now at home, we could look at the khutbah because we cannot come, we're sick in our monthly reasons, men who are sick on bed, you know, other people, and the case may be different. Alhamdulillah. The difference with the Islamic profession is that you will be told to spend in the part of Allah, spend in Quran, spend in Dawah. But nobody wants to do that. They want to go and let the other professionals rip them off. See how the world runs? The deception. Who says it? Wa hayatu dunya illa mata'ul gurur. This dunya, this life, this dunya is all about deception, brothers and sisters. And remember, as I conclude with Ibn Allah, the example of the old man and woman who have lived their entire life and had all the wealth, all the property, 
all the degrees and not realize and calculate how much they have really spent that is worth their living and how much they should have spent that would have made life more worthwhile and beneficial for them in the grave and the hereafter, inshallah. Ya Allah, Ya Alham Rahmin, Ya Ghafur Rahim. Ya Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, Allah. Ya Allah, we ask thee, Ya Allah, to shower your peace and blessings unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask thee to forgive us, Ya Allah. Purify our hearts. Give us the right intention, the right purpose of life, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help us to do everything lillah for you, Ya Allah, to obey the laws of the Quran and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina azab al-nar wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqahi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin inna allahu malaikatuhu yisalluna ala al-nabi ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana muhammad wa ala ala muhammadin bi adadi man sallallahu wa sallam Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana muhammad wa ala ala muhammadin bi adadi man qa'ada wa qam wa salli ala jamil anbiya wal mursaleen wa على كل ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وجل وحمى الله أكبر كما سلام Oh, uh-huh.